so we've learned a whole ton about variance and standard deviation, but we want to kind of cement it in our brain and learn a little bit more as well. So let's do another example. So we're going to reconsider our PET data set from section 3.1, and we're not going to include the 127 PET class member, the one with all the tarantulas yet. We'll, we'll bring that in. So we want to calculate the mean standard deviation and variance. And then let's make a hint. <laughs> Are we going to use sample values or population values? So just a reminder, sample values are x bar, that's the mean, s, that's the standard deviation, and s squared, that's the variance. Population values, the symbols are mu, sigma, and sigma squared, right? That's the mean, that's the standard deviation, that's the variance, right? That's the order they go in. Same thing for this. This is mean, standard deviation, variance. All right, well, let's go find that data set. We have it in StatCrunch, so we can just grab it. So if I go to data sets in StatCrunch and I type pet data, it should come up. Math 133, Chapter 3, pet data, that's us. So I click on that, and this data set, remember, has the 6, 6, and 8, but it does not have the tarantulas, huzzah. So we're going to go to the same place we've gone every time, stat, summary stat, columns. All right, so we click that. We say pet data. Now this is where we have to make a choice. If your data set is a sample, you choose mean, variance, and standard deviation. I'm doing that, by the way, with shift, click because I want all three of those values and they're all together in a block, you can select them individually, mean, variance, standard deviation if you want, or you can hold it down. If it's a population, then you're actually going to go down here and select the unadjusted variance, oops, sorry, the unadjusted variance, the unadjusted standard deviation. The mean never changes its calculation, so that's always this one. So you have to scroll real carefully, you can see I'm already having trouble, and you would do that. Okay, well, our data set is a sample of students, right? It's a sample of statistics students. So we're actually going to choose these three up here. These are the sample values. Well, the mean changes, so don't worry about the mean. The mean is whatever you want it to be. But this variance and standard deviation are different, so you have to select the correct one, which in this case we're going to select these ones because it's a sample. So we hit Compute, and there we have the values. All right, so we just need to write those down. Let me close this so I can bring this screen up. And I'm going to answer them out of order. <laughs> the values are statistics. Statistics. Oops, I ran out of space for my eye. Statistics because the data set, well, let's see, but the data are from a sample. Okay, so the mean. The mean is x bar. X's were the values, right? Zero pets, zero pets, one pet, one pet, three pets, four pets, and so on. The bar means you want the mean. That's actually a standard symbol for mean. It's to put a bar over it. And it's 2.269 pets. The standard deviation the symbol for sta sample standard deviation is S, which was 2.127 pets. The variance, the symbol is S squared, which is 4.525 pets squared. All right, now how did I get them? Let's write down instructions for ourselves. So let's write our stat crunch path. It's the same thing we've been doing through the whole chapter. We actually use this for everything <laughs> in this chapter, except for section 3.3, funnily enough. So stat, summary, stat, columns. That's where we go. All right, now, what about that interpretation piece? Right. So remember, the interpretation piece, there's a script. It's we expect context to be the mean, give or take, standard deviation. Okay, so we expect, and I'll just say, use the script. 
right? It's on the previous page. So we expect, and what were these people? These were students. So we expect a student, I guess a random student, I should say, a random student to have the mean, right? The mean number of pets, 2.269 pets, give or take 2.127 pets. All right, so here's the context, right? And including the units, so this is context. Then over here we have the mean And then down below, we have the standard deviation. Right, that's the way the script works. All right, do we have any class members with an unusual number of pets? All right, well, let's go over what unusual means one more time. So unusual is also on the previous page. Unusual is anything that is beyond two standard deviations away. It also, by the way, has a less than 5% probability, but we're not in the probability chapter yet, so we'll just hold off on that one. <laughs> so anything beyond two standard deviations. So we need to find two standard deviations before we can answer this question. So let's find it. Let's find the mean plus two standard deviations which is the mean was 2.269 plus 2 standard deviations, which was 2.127. And then we're also going to do the mean take away 2 standard deviations, which is 2.269 take away 2 times 2.127. And of course, I'm going to make Desmos do this. I'm not going to bother. All right, so let me find Desmos. OK, so there's a lot of decimal places on this one. So 2.269 plus 2 times 2.127. And then the beautiful thing about Desmos is that you can copy and paste. So I can highlight this graph, copy it, or graph this statement, copy, paste, and just change that to a minus sign. And there you have it. I mean, technically, you could change it up here if you wanted, but, you know, where's the fun in that? <laughs> so I wanted you to see that ability. So negative 1.985 and positive 6.523. Okay, so positive 6.523, negative 1.985. Both of these are pets. That's the unit for it. So anything that's past 6.523 or past negative 1.985, well, that's impossible. You can't have negative numbers of pets. So this one's not really going to do anything for us. But if you remember our data set, we do have a student that's unusual. We had a student at 8. They had 8 pets. And so if they have 8 pets, there's the pet data right there. That student right there with 8 pets is unusual, right? And obviously the student with 127 would be as well because they're an outlier, but you know. So yes, the student with eight pets is unusual because they're above 6.523 pets. Right? Anything more than this number is unusual, or anything less than this number. Right? Because those would be past two standard deviations. And indeed, we did have one student with eight pets. And that student is unusual because they're above that 6.523 pets. So now, what about the tarantula student? <laughs> Um, and they were, it was a very nice student, I will say. <laughs> I still remember what they looked like and everything. Um, so with that 127 pet student, what's the mean standard deviation and variance now? All right, so let's go back to StatCrunch and let's add in that student. Down at the bottom of the column, I'm just going to add 127 here. 
And let me teach you something. You don't have to go rerun this. So if you add a number, you can go to options and there's a refresh there. So if you hit refresh, it'll just change the values. Isn't that nice? So now I can see the new values right there. Yes, you could go rerun it. You can go to stat, summary stat, columns, pet data, mean, variance, and standard deviation. Boom, right there they are, right? So there they are without the 127. But if I put the 127 in and press enter, and then I rerun it, there. So, but you don't have to go rerun it every time. If you add a data point, you can just hit options, refresh, and it will refresh the data, or excuse me, refresh the statistics on those data. All right. So the mean became, let's see here, the mean, the new mean, still in X bar, is 6.889 pets. The new standard deviation, which is S, is, I think it's really large. <laughs> I want to go grab this again, just to be sure. Yeah, 24.095, very large. 24.095 pets. And the new variance, which is S squared. Sorry, I don't remember it. It was... Uh, 580.56, look at that, from 4.52 to 580, just by having that one outlier in there, really messed with these values. And that's the point I'm trying to make. <laughs> so this was 580.564 pets squared. To quote... Keanu Reeves in a very old movie. Whoa. <laughs> That's a lot of difference. These values were really changed by having that one outlier. Oh, I just wrote my chain, my D backwards. Sorry, changed by just the one outlier. And what conclusion does that lead us to? Well, we ran into this topic before in section 3.1, but now we're going to expand it. We said in section 3.1 that the mean was not resistant. It was getting pulled towards the outliers, right? We talked about that in section 3.1. The median, on the other hand, is resistant. That's why we choose it if your data set is skewed. And now we're learning, oh, the standard deviation and the variance are also not resistant, right? So we learned right here, the median is resistant. The mean is sensitive right? And now we're learning it's not just the mean. So that's what we want to say right here. So important note. The mean, the standard deviation, and the variance are all sensitive in other words, not resistant They don't resist the pull of an outlier. If there's outliers, it will greatly affect the values for the mean, the standard deviation, and the variance. And if there's outliers, that generally means skewed data. So we should not use these values with skewed data. And we'll talk more about that in sections 3.4 and 3.5. Right, so we'll s more on this in a later section. We'll see it later. <laughs>